If you want to learn how to make a video game in Unity, this tutorial should help you create a game over screen that appears when the player loses. In the last video, we used Unity's UI to create a scoring system that adds points anytime the player dodges a pipe. Now it's time to complete our game and create a game over screen anytime our player collides with an obstacle. In Unity, the first thing we'll do is create our UI screen. When working with UI game objects, it's often easier to switch into 2D mode. To do this, just left click on this 2D icon. Now, since all our UI objects need a canvas, we'll include it within the same game UI canvas that we created in the last video. So I'll go up to my game UI, right click, go down to create empty, and I'll left click on that. Since this game over object will be used to house all of our game over objects, I'll go ahead and rename it to game over screen. Next, let's right click on this new game over screen game object and go down into the UI section and then go up to image and left click on that. Once you've added this image as a child of our game over screen game object, you should see a little white box appear. This will eventually be the background to our game over screen. So let's rename it to background. With our new background image selected, the first thing we'll do is adjust this so that it fills up our screen. There are a few ways we could fit this to our screen. The easiest thing to do is to stretch this so that it always anchors to the corners of our screen. And to do that, all we need to do is go up into this rec transform, I'll left click to expand it, and then left click on this middle center icon. You'll see a window pops up with all your anchor presets. In order to stretch this across the entire screen, we'll go down into the bottom right corner here, and if you hold the Alt button, you'll see two arrows that stretch vertically and horizontally. So it's basically saying stretch, stretch. So let's go ahead and left click on that. You'll notice nothing really happened, and that's because we actually need to go back into our game over screen here. Now with our game over screen object selected, let's do the exact same thing. I'll left click on middle center, go down to stretch stretch in the bottom right hand corner, hold alt and left click. Now you should see your white box is stretched to fit the entire screen. Even if I adjust this to be super narrow, like maybe a mobile phone, it fits super wide like an ultra wide monitor, it's still going to fit. Next, let's go back into our background image and change this background color down in the image component to black. So I'll left click on my color field and you'll see a color picker pops up. I'll simply drag this down to black. Now to make our screen slightly transparent, let's change its alpha value from this 255 to 200. You'll see that still shows the game in the background a little bit. This is totally a preference thing, so feel free to set this up however you like. I'll go ahead and close my color picker now. Now that we have the background of our game over screen, let's add a big title that lets the player know the game is over. Let's right click on our game over screen again and navigate to a new text object. So I'll go down to UI and go up and left click on text. Since we know this will be the title for our game over screen, let's just title it game over title. Now with our game over title selected, let's go over into our anchor presets again, left click and go up to this top right section where it says top stretch, hold alt and left click again to stretch it across the top. And I'm actually going to navigate into it and use my rec tool to pull it down just a little bit. So if you hover over the bottom line here, pull it down a little bit. I'll type 400 for anyone who wants to know exactly the dimensions I'm using. And now that we've got enough space for our text to show up, let's change it where it says new text to game over and increase this font size to about 190. Next, I'll go down into the alignment section and center align this text so it's right in the middle of our screen. And I'll change this color here so that we can actually see it from this dark gray color to white. And I'll close my color picker. I'll also go up to my font style and switch it from normal to bold. Next, below our game over title, I would like to add a final score. So I'll just go over to my game over title and I'll duplicate it by hitting Control or Command D on my keyboard. Then I'll go up to my move tool, left click to select it, and then just drag it down a bit so we get an idea of where it's gonna fit. Next, I'll swap out this game over text with a zero. And just to mix things up, I'll switch this from bold to normal and I'll decrease the font size to about 150. I'll actually pull this down just a little bit more. And before we forget, let's go into this game over title duplicate that we created and rename it to final score. Next, let's add a button that the player can click to replay our game. So I'll go back into the game over screen object. I'll right click on it, go down into UI and left click on button. While we're here, let's rename this to retry button. And I'll just pull this down a bit and I'll use my rec tool to pull it out. So I'll actually zoom in a bit here, grab one of these corners, left click and then hold alt and I'll pull it out in all directions, fine tune this a bit. So I'll do 430 for the width and we'll do 90 for the height. Also, you may have noticed when we created our retry button, it came with a child text object. So I'll left click on this text game object and I'll go down where it says button and just type the word retry. 
Next down in my character settings, let's change the font style to bold and let's change the font size to about 50. Now I'll switch my aspect back to 16 by nine just to see what we're looking at. Okay, it looks a little weird. Let's move some things around. I'm actually going to take my game over title and my final score, select my move tool and drag both of them down so they're a little bit more centered. Now with our UI screen design done, it's time to hook everything up with a bit of code. Over in our scripts folder, let's right click and add our last C sharp script. I'll left click on C sharp script and rename it to Game Over Manager. Next, let's select our game UI object and drag this Game Over Manager script into it as a component. So I'll just drag it right under our graphic raycaster. All right, let's double click on our Game Over script to open it up. Inside our Game Over Manager script, let's remove our top two usings. And while we're here, let's add in our Unity Engine.UI namespace. Next, down below, let's remove our start and update methods. We won't need those. Now, our Game Over Manager script will handle two things. We'll use it to pop up our Game Over screen and restart the game if our player clicks the retry button. First, we'll need a few variables. Let's create a new game object variable called Game Over Screen. We'll use this variable in a minute to activate our game over screen when our player collides with an obstacle. Next, let's also create a variable to get the current score text object that we created in the last video. And finally, we'll add one last variable to grab the final score text object that we just made in our UI. Perfect, we'll wanna connect these within Unity in a moment, so let's go ahead and add serialize field in front of each variable. I'll do open and close brackets, space, and then type the word serialize field. Then to speed things up, I'm gonna copy the serialize field that we just typed out and paste it in front of our text current score and text final score variables. Now, below our variables, let's create a new public method called set game over. By default, our game over screen won't be visible to the player until they hit an obstacle. We'll start off the game with it set to inactive. So in order to activate our window when our player does hit an obstacle, let's take our game over screen variable that we just created up here. I'll hit Ctrl or Command C on my keyboard to copy it. Then go down into my set game over public method, hit Ctrl or Command V to paste it. Then I'll type dot set active, open and close parentheses and a semicolon. And inside the set active, I'll type true. Next, to trigger this method, if our player does collide with an obstacle, we need to go into our player collide manager script. Inside our player collide manager script, let's create a new variable at the top. Similar to how we created our score manager script, we're going to create a game over manager script. And I'll include another serialized field at the beginning here. So I'll hit Ctrl or Command C to copy that and Ctrl or Command V to paste it. Now with our game over manager variable created in our player collide manager script, I will select it, hit Ctrl or Command C to copy it. And right under our debug.log game over, we want to include our new variable, the game over manager. And if we hit dot, we should be able to find our public variable that we just created called set game over and I will do open and close parentheses at the end of that. And anytime our player collides with an obstacle, the set game over method will execute. Next, let's make sure all of our scripts are saved. So hit Ctrl or Command Shift S to save all of your scripts and let's head back into Unity. First thing we'll do is left click on our game UI object that we created and I'll scroll down to our game over manager script. You can see we have a game over screen that's requiring a game object. So we'll take our game over screen game object. I will left click on it and drag it into our game over screen variable field here. Next, I'll take our current score text object and drag that into our current score variable. And then the final score text object here, I'll drag that in as well. And finally, we need to go back into our bird player, go down to our player collide manager script and we need to find the object that has this game over manager script attached to it. And we know that is our game UI object. So I'll left click and drag that into the slot. You'll see it's pulling in the game over manager script. And because we don't want our player starting in the game, seeing this game over window, let's left click on this game over screen game object again. And if you go up to this little check mark, you can left click to deactivate it. Perfect. And that's it. We can actually test our game over screen by hitting play. So I'll dodge a pipe and then I'll hit a pipe just to see that game over screen pop up. Perfect. You'll notice our retry button doesn't do anything yet and our final score does not update with the current score, but we'll fix that in a minute. To accurately display our player's final score, let's head back into our game over manager script. Back in our game over manager script, in order to get our final score to update with the current score, let's double click on our final score text variable, hit Ctrl or Command C to copy it, then go below our game over screen set active true and hit Ctrl or Command V to paste it, then type dot text 
and then an equal sign. Now in order to set our final score.txt equal to the current score, double click on current score variable, hit controller command C to copy it, then controller command V to paste it, and then dot text. This simply grabs the score text we show the player during gameplay and copies it into our final score text object. While we're here, let's also hide our current score variable as we won't need both showing when the game over screen pops up. To do this, let's copy and paste our current score variable. So I'll select it, hit Control or Command C on my keyboard to copy it. I'll space down a couple times, then hit Control or Command V to paste it. Then I'll hit dot game object to grab the whole game object, then dot set active, then open and close parentheses. And instead of true, we'll type false. Just like that. Now let's save our script by hitting Control or Command S and head back into Unity to test this out. Because everything's already hooked up, all we need to do is click play. I'll pass over the first pipe and then hit the second pipe. So all we should see is this one transfer into our final score and the original current score one disappears. So this is perfect. Obviously our retry button doesn't work yet. So let's fix that next. To set up our retry button, let's head back into our game over manager script. Back in our game over manager script, let's create a new public method called restart game. There are a few ways we could restart our game, but the easiest way is to just reset the current scene. So what we can do is go up into our namespaces and add one more called unityengine.scenemanagement. Perfect, now let's head back into our restart game method and type scenemanager.loadscene followed by open close parentheses and a semicolon. Inside these parentheses, we need to add the index of the scene we want to load or reload. Because our game only has one scene currently, the index value of it will be zero. So we'll hit zero here and all that will do is load the current scene over again. Now, while we're in the script, let's go ahead and hit controller command S to save it. And I'll show you where to find an index value of any scene that you're currently working in back in Unity. Back in Unity, to find the index value of any scene you're working in, Go up to File, go down to Build Settings, and you'll see I currently have no scenes added to my build. But if I left click to add open scenes, it'll add my currently open scene. And you can see here on the top right, it's got the scene index of zero. Next, to connect our retry button to the method that we just created, all we need to do is go into our retry button, left click on it, and go down into the button component that it's already got built into the button by default. In the bottom, you'll see this on click action list. And this basically means anytime the button is clicked, what should it do? It currently does nothing. So to add something, let's click this little plus sign. And because we know our restart game method is on our game over manager script, which is attached to our game UI object, all we have to do is left click and drag it into this slot here. You'll see it snaps in and we have to select what we want this to do. You'll get quite a few options by default, but what we want to do is go to our game over manager script and then go up to restart game. You can see it's a public method. So it appears in this list. If yours does not show up here, go back and make sure it's set to public. But if it is here, all you have to do is left click on restart game to make that button work. So let's test our game by hitting the play button and I will dodge a pipe and then hit the next pipe to make sure our one still transfers over into the final score. Perfect. Now you see our game over, final score of one. Now when I left click on retry, you'll notice something kind of weird. All of our lighting is really dark and odd. You'll most likely see this as well. It happened every time I tested. I tried to get around it because lighting is not a topic we're gonna cover, but to quickly show you how to fix that, simply go up to window, drop down to rendering, left click on lighting to open up our lighting view, and then just left click on generate lighting. It may take a few seconds, but once it's done, you can close this window and click play to test it out again. Get one and then left click on retry. You'll see our lighting is working as expected. Awesome, that technically completes our game from start to finish, but there's just a tiny bit of polish I'd like to add. Most games freeze or pause when the game over screen pops up, but right now our pipes just kind of keep moving in the background. It's pretty easy to create the pause effect though. To do it, let's head back into our game over manager script one last time. Back in our game over manager script, let's head back into our set game over method and type a few spaces. Next, type time.timescale. Time.timescale just gets the current speed of our time, and to freeze it so that the scale is stopped, all we have to do is set it equal to zero. Just like that. To make sure time is restored to its default speed, if we have to restart our game, let's select our time.timescale equals zero, hit controller command C to copy it. Then right before we load our scene again, let's add in our time.timescale and just set it from zero to one. I'll hit Control or Command S to save our script. Awesome, let's head back into Unity one last time to test out our final game. Back in Unity, I'll left click on play and I will dodge a couple pipes, 
then hit one and make sure our screen pops up as expected. So I'll hit this next pipe here. Boom. So you can see all of our pipes freeze in the background and our game over screen takes over, shows the final score that our player made, and then gives us this retry button the player can click to play again and try and see if they can beat their last score. Awesome. Whether this is your first project or not, congrats on making a fully playable game in Unity. We kept things pretty simple for this game to focus on the basics, but let me know if you have any cool ideas you'd like to see added to the game. Depending on interest, I might extend this series in the future. Either way, be on the lookout for more Unity tutorials coming soon. If you like this video, be sure to hit that little thumbs up button. It's totally free and helps me out a ton. As always, please leave any comments or questions down in the section below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.